and welcome to the next American Tackle In Focus. Today, you join me for a 24-hour carp fishing session and we're talking about carp fishing applications. We're gonna be looking at how to introduce bait, we're gonna be looking at surface fishing and what components and blanks we have for American Tackle that are perfect for that job. The weather's perfect, I've taken a walk around the lake already, there's a lot of fish on the surface, so that's what we're gonna start with and go back to the car, grab some gear, I'll see you in a minute. one of those really nice summer's evenings. It's, it feels a bit stormy in the air, you know, high pressure, sticky, you know, and the carp are all over the surface. You can see their black backs poking out, they're, they're, they're going around underneath the surface. And I've got the wind on my back, which is gonna help me to just drift some of these floating baits across the surface to them. So uh, gonna be quiet, get set up, and then hopefully we can present a bait on one of them. And you never know, we might get lucky. So we uh, put a fair bit of bait out and already it looks like, as well as the birds, the, the fish have started feeding already. Going to get them more confident, um, so I'm just getting my hook bait ready and simply all I'm fishing is a trimmed down pop-up hook bait, uh, just on a very short hair on a light nylon hook link, a small very sharp hook, all the way to a weighted controller and this is giving me the weight to cast out that distance. And also what it's going to do is when the fish takes, it acts like a, a bolt machine and it's going to actually set the hook for me when the fish takes. So fingers crossed, we can get one pretty quick. It's looking good. It's a case of every now and again just filling up. Just keep trickling the mixes over them. And they know that sound with these hitting the water. They can, uh, good job we got a five kilo sack of uh, dog biscuits with us because the birds are absolutely destroying it. So hopefully we can feed them off a little bit. They, after a while they get full up and they leave them alone. It's almost unbearable. I love this sort of fishing, but it can be quite uh, quite exhausting when it's so hot all the time. They're showing, they're showing, and they're, they're taking a few mixes here and there, but they're not really on it yet. And they're drifting a little bit further over as the mixes are going out, they're taking them further out. I keep seeing them stick their fins up and their back out and that, and they're interested. It could be one of those typical float efficient evenings where it all happens in sort of one hour right before last light. It's generally how it goes. They get their confidence up when it starts to get a bit darker and have a proper feed up. I do love this style of fishing though, you know, because you have to create your own opportunities. You've got to use the right balance gear. And uh, yeah, it's nice with a bit of finesse carp fishing in, in today's age with all these big rods and big reels and distance fishing. But uh, this is a lot more fun. During this session, one of the rods I've been using, I've built using the brand new Atrex 12 foot, two and a half pound test curve blank. This is an absolute fantastic blank if you're looking for something you're gonna be doing, for example, floater fishing with like me, or if you may be doing tension bream fishing, cast weights up to about two and a half ounces. What I like about this blank is it's really lightweight. It's thin, 
but it's really nice progressive power which makes it fantastic for lighter hook links. Ideal when I'm doing the surface fishing, when I'm scaling down to get those extra bites. It's going to absorb those lunges of the fish's head when I'm playing them in close. I don't have to worry about popping hooks with the lighter, smaller hooks. All in all, it's a fantastic blank if I'm doing more finesse style fishing. Like I said though, tension bream anglers are going to love this blank. It's going to cast a very long way, feeders, PVA bags, any application you deem perfect for this kind of length and power. I've coupled it up with a carbon fiber reel seat. EVA full grip, really nice balanced blank, ideal when I'm holding the rod for long durations during my session, looking for the fish on the surface. Come on, keep taking. What I really would like to see is, is a multiple fish feeding at the same time. See them cruising underneath the floaters. They know they're there. They keep checking them out. They just keep, keep going back all the time. I think it's only a matter of time before they start going on it. Now this is now they're feeding, there's two fish they're feeding now. It's well within casting range, there's plenty of mixes there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to wait for them to start their long drift round again when they leave the, they leave the baited area and I'm going to get this rod into position quietly. Oh there's more fish coming in again now though. They've started to really come onto the bait a little bit now. I mean there's so many fish and another one. Oh, I'm getting really tempted now. I mean, I've had another one there. I've got two groups of fish feeding in front of me now. I'm torn on where to cast. But I think it's a case of get the rod out, slowly read it into position, and hope. God, he's there, and that's a good fish, that is. So I've just uh, ran back to the van and uh, picked up the gear because there's a lot of fish feeding in this swim, uh, not just on the surface but on the bottom. It seems that uh, someone has been here fishing recently and uh, baiting up because uh, there's a lot of fish sheeting up out there, uh, a lot. I mean it's, it's like a jacuzzi going on so it's too, opportun too good opportunity to miss. I, I'm going to just quickly put on a higher track pop up and I'm just going to drop it gently into that sort of feeding area just to see if I can pick up a opportunist bite really. Beat up. Jeez, look at it. Absolute sheeting up. Uh, what we'll do is we'll do a cast, a long cast, and try and reel it back into the area. <laughs> For this rod, I've built them using the brand new Vortex Air Guides. Vortex Airs are really, really lightweight. That was paramount when I thought about building this rod. I'm going to be holding it for long periods of time. I want to keep the weight down. I've started with the double foot and then I've gone up to the brand new single foots. Perfect if you want to get the weight even lighter. We do those down to really small sizes and on this particular rod I took them down all the way to an 8 mil tip. Perfect for my light lines, I put more running guides up through without worrying about adding more weight to the tip. That's going to keep it more responsive, quicker reaction time and the recovery is really nice. Perfect rod for my floater fishing. It also, we do them all the way up to a 30 mil, so it's ideal for those guys with the distance rods where all those little weight savings to get the tip recovery as fast as possible and those extra distances achieved. So if you're looking for the new guides for your rod, definitely check out the Vortex Airs, matte black, single foot, double foot, everything you need for your next build. So I think the time's come now, I've seen quite a few fish up and they're, they're taking more and more mixes, the light's about to go, the sun's just to drop behind the trees and they definitely get their confidence up, so uh, it feels there's another one just then, another one again. It's a definite time now to get the rod out there. Gently drop it out there. 
nice and quiet into the feeding area. And to be honest, normally I would reel it back, but I'm gonna leave it and just let it drift into position instead uh, because they're doing really wide circles. So I can't quite tell where the fish are. So it's better not to disturb it at all. Just set the clutch. One of the most exciting things about carp fishing is, is the hunt. It's the, the trap setting. It's the finding your quarry and working out exactly how you can catch them. And carp are not the easiest fish to catch. Um, there's many ways of doing it. The more pressure they get, the harder they get to catch. And so it's you against them. And uh, that's what I like, the challenge. Oh, sorry, there's so many fish feeding out there. I can barely talk to you. My heart's pumping because they're getting closer and closer to the hook bait. So one thing that's super important on any rod build is the tip top. I mean, this is the guy that's going to be taking the most pressure, the most pain. Uh, the line's going to be running through it. It's going to have all that acute angle when braided line, mono line, leader knots, everything. And for me, one of the best tip tops I found for my carp fishing, which match to a lot of the guide frames we have, such as the Tie Forge Air, the Vortex Air, in fact, any of our guides, is the Delta tip top. The Delta tip top, as you can see, is a very rolled frame anti-tangle design. Basically what that's gonna do is if you're gonna have any coils of line coming up through and it's gonna wrap around, these arms will make the line release and not fasten on the tip, which is gonna stop you having snap-offs. It's gonna just cause any, you know, take away any issues, such as if the line is a bit twisted and it rubs up around the tip here. When you reel, it's just gonna flick off and there'll be no problems. This one here has got the Nanolite Center, extremely hard, lightweight and robust ceramic, exclusive to American Tackle. So if you're looking for the premium option for your carp rods, or for any other rods in fact, I would check out the Delta Tip Top. Yep. Right. Oh, what a strike that was. Been waiting so long for that bite. It's been getting later. As I said, the sun's gone down, and I was just saying there's a few fish feeding, and I cast this beyond them, and I let it sit behind the bait because I kept seeing more fish out there, and we got one. We have to go very careful. Got the light hook, you see. That's why this Atrex 12 foot two and a half is perfect for this. A really heavy fish and it's taking its time out there. God this feels big mate. Seriously it feels quite big. It's getting closer now. It's been a long battle. Let's get the net ready. It's better to stay on this high bank, keep him away from these rocks. Just let the rod do the work. Starting to see him now. Ooh. So, he's not done yet. He's not done yet. Oh. Come on. Ooh. Just tire him out slowly. That's the thing about this carp fishing, you know. You gotta take your time. You wait all that, wait all that time for a bite. The last thing you wanna do is try and pump him in too quick. It's better to just tire him out. back I promise and this clutch is not that loose I can tell you it's probably a common fighting like this wouldn't surprise me but there's also some gorgeous mirrors in here and I have had them to up a 30 pound fish so all out there look beyond me this fish still feeding I think we, we have not really seen it properly yet it doesn't seem to want to come in at all Come on now, here we go, here we go. Come on, let's see ya. <sighs> Again. Oh. 
Oh, he seems to be winning the race at the moment, mate, but oh, he does not want to come up. He does not want to come up. Oh, it's a nice mirror. Very nice mirror. It's a big fish. It's a nice fish. Is he done? Is he done? Come on, are we going to win? Come on. No, 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 no. Again, not again. Oh. <laughs> oh, I thought I might have had him then. Oh, come on, you beauty. Come on now. Come to daddy. Come on. Oh, no, 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 no. Not again, not again. <laughs> he gets 10 out of 10 for trying to escape, I tell you that. Absolutely amazing fight. This is one of the best fights I've had in ages. Just goes to show on this lighter gear, it's so much fun. I'm enjoying every minute of it. Oh, there we go, there we go. Yes! Oh, we got it. Oh, that took some time, but what a fantastic way to start the evening. We got one off the top. Let's sort it out, I'll catch my breath, and I'll show you the prize. It's the big one. <laughs> it's the biggest fish in the lake. <laughs> it's, the, it's the biggest fish in the lake. I'm pretty sure it's the big one. <laughs> I told you it was that heavy, didn't I? That is a big fish. I'm not joking, guys. I think that is, that's gotta be over 30 pound. That is a very big carp. Wow. you believe it? Uh, I've now realised what I've just caught. It's actually the, the biggest fish in the lake. Um, for me, a repeat capture. Uh, so, you know, that's a little bit special in itself. I'm not one for repeat captures, but you can't choose which one takes the hook bait when you come to catch a few of the other ones. And to catch it off the surface again uh, is phenomenal. I'm just gonna unhook it here. It's a hungry fish. It was never coming out that. So that was an amazing battle on that Atrex 12 foot two and a half uh, on the floater rod here. And we're just gonna, I've got all the sling and everything zeroed. So what I'm just gonna do is gonna slip this net out. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna slip her ooh, 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 into this way sling. You notice we've got the big mat here to take out care of the fish. Everything's prepared before you lift the fish out of the water. So you look after them as best you can. Just make sure she's in the bottom of the sling. It's all zeroed. 31 pound and eight ounce Ooh, of angry mirror carp. All right, let's have a quick look at her and then we're gonna slip her back. Let's lift her up and uh, let you have a closer look at her. Ooh, 31 pound and eight ounce. Oh, surface caught mirror carp. Check that out, what a fish. Like I said, it's a repeat capture, but I'm happy nonetheless. You saw that amazing fight on the light hook, the small, small hook, sorry, and the light line. But the Atrex 12 foot two and a half was a perfect tool for the job. And you can catch fish like that. So I'm gonna slip this one back now. And uh, I think we might have a chance on another. What a fish to start the session. I'm gonna go in tonight feeling pretty good, but I, uh, over my shoulder there, I see fish feeding, so I'm not gonna waste any time. I'm gonna flick some more floaters out, see if I can get another. Well, who would have believed it? You know, we caught the biggest fish in the lake, and um, it's not been easy, as you've seen. Uh, they haven't really been getting on it. A few fish coming up now and again and feeding, and I keep looking back this way instead of looking at the cam, because uh, every now and again, I see one come up and take a mixer, but, the light's now fading, it's getting late, even though I still think there's a very good chance of a bite and I have had a fish come up a couple times, um, I'm gonna have to start getting uh, stuff ready for the evening. I've seen a lot of fish feeding on the bottom, I've seen fizzing, I've been sheeting, and that, that gives me a lot of confidence that I've, uh, tonight could be 
could be good for a bite on the bottom. So I'm going to start putting together some spob mix and get the alarm sorted, uh, bivvy up, you know, got a lot to do. I've left it quite late because I've been so into the surface fishing. Um, but I think that uh, that was a just reward and uh, yeah, we can focus on um, doing a bit of fishing on the bottom now. So I say that, but I keep looking at the surface. We'll see. So now we get a spot sorted and uh, I'm uh, using the Atrex 12 foot spod rod here, as you can see, and a uh, fantastic bit of kit, not only for spodding heavy weights a long distance, but I also use it for my feature finding rod as well. And I'll show you more of that later, but for now I'm gonna get on with it as the light's fading. I just put on a lead braided line, it's a Nano X line, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna feel that silty bottom if I just feel any firmer areas, cleaner areas where the fish might be feeding more regular, and that's where we're gonna try and present the bait tonight. If you've had a close eye, you might have noticed exactly what guides have been on the 12 foot Atrex spot I've been using. And they are the Tide Forged Airs. These are a little bit something special. They're brand new and basically they are the first set of guides ever designed primarily with carp fishing at its focus. By that I mean we have taken consideration actions, powers of carp blanks, size reels, pound breakage of line, dimensions, the guide placement from the reel seat and we have derived a set of guides that we feel are absolutely optimal for carp fishing. The tie forged air, air means ceramic free in all American tackles guide range and basically you have a stainless steel press ring, extremely lightweight, it can't be broken like ceramics can be cracked but also that lightweight throughout the rest of the rod as we know on carp rods they're long, they're bulky, they're often heavy powers, it's going to keep the weight down. Not only that, you've got the anti-wrap style design. Normally on similar guides, they're very bulky, they're very heavy, quite high standoffs. We've taken all of these process points and adapted them to create the ultimate guide for carp fishing. Flexible frames, lightweight matte black finishes, anti-wrap design, basically all the key characteristics you require in a premium carp build. As you can see, we have them ranging all the way down to a 16 mil and soon to be available all the way down in double foots to a six mil and single foots to a four mil. So you can apply them for specimen rods, spinning rods and anything, but primarily they're perfect for big distance carp fishing, anything you require to be a premium option. and then the pierce de resistance when it finally lights.
well. It took some hours to get things together, but we're all set now. Rods are out. Party's still going in the background. You might be able to hear it. But the fish are also still having a party and they're rolling and they're moving. All that activity means one thing is at some point they're going to be hungry. And I've got a lot of bait out there and two very sharp hooks. So fingers crossed. Also though, we're pretty hungry now. So we're going to chuck some meat on the barbecue, have a really nice time, something to eat, fill our bellies, get a good night's sleep, and then early in the morning I think we'll be woken up with a Mr. Carp or two. See you then. So beautiful now, isn't it? This is this is what I love about waking up this time in the morning. You know, although it's just so important as a carp angler to look for the fish early morning, it's when it's when you see the most, it's when you can unlock the secrets of the lake. But there's one thing that I love more than anything, and that is on a personal level, for me. I believe the world is at a better place early morning. It's almost so perfect. It's quieter, there's less people. Nature's just, you hear the dawn chorus with the birds. Just everything feels right. I've always loved it since I've been a kid. Going up early, you know, to school, I would always go earlier than everyone else because I just love those mornings and um, yeah, I'm definitely an early bird. feeding out in front of this little pontoon here and on the surface already so I just chuck some mixers out and just see if we can stalk one out. Yeah, I think I'm not sure if this is a carp or not, I don't think so. But it's hard to say this lake is famous for its giant bream but I don't know what we got here, but uh, it could be a very big bream, you never know. They go up to sort of almost 16, 17 pounds. So. Or it could be a small carp, but the fight's been very, very slow. No, I think it's a carp. Yep. Yeah. It's just decided not to do a lot the whole way in. Yeah, it's a carp. <laughs> now he's suddenly woken up. Really strange, he didn't do anything the whole way in. I even thought it was a bream. And now, <laughs> suddenly woken up. Almost. Should be the final roll. Come on. Oh. <laughs> I can't believe I actually said that. I thought it might be a bream. We see it fighting like this. I was actually kind of hoping it was a bream because it would have been one of the big ones, which be a, a personal best. <laughs> Fun though. There we go. We got him. Right, well, I'm gonna waste no time at all. I'm gonna unhook this one, leave it in the edge and get the other get the rod back out there because uh, it's a good be feeding time. And we want to see if we can catch another. Oh. 
So let's have a look a little at the prize. Very early in the morning, up watching the fish. And we had this one over that spotted out area we did yesterday evening. Not a massive fish, nothing like the first one we caught, but still a very, very clean, pretty common. Look at that, pristine fish. I'm pretty happy with that one, to be honest. Can't ever be unhappy with a lovely fish like that. Let's have a look at the other side. And there you go. Check that out. Lovely common carp. Perfect. I'm gonna put this one back. The rods are ready. Hopefully next one will be a bit bigger. But I'm already really happy, two fish. I could go home a happy man. During my session, you might have noticed me doing quite a lot of application fishing, and by that I mean marker feature finding, spodding, and for me, I've been using the brand new Atrex spod rods. These rods here I've built with the CRSD seats, full EVA grips, they match all my other rods, and when I say about matching, for me it's important to choose exactly what spod rod for the application. If I'm going to go out and fish with 10 foot rods, I like to use a 10 foot spod rod. It matches the pack down length, but not only that, it feels very natural when I swap over from casting a 10 foot rod and then I go back to my 10 foot spod rod. So I don't have to adapt for a 12 foot rod, it means I can keep my accuracy and consistency. With accuracy, the Atrex rods have been developed, they're not going to be too stiff. That's a mistake with a lot of spod rods. You're gonna lose accuracy. You're not gonna load the blank correctly. They're that beautiful 1K, 40 ton, high modulus carbon. They've got a moderate fast, but an extra heavy power. You can cast big spoms with ease, well over 100 yards. In fact, the little 10 footer, I've done it myself over 150 in testing. But it's absolutely primary to cast accurately up to around 100 yards with ease to match your 10 foot rods. Then if I want to go a little bit further and I've got my 12 foot rods out, I absolutely love the 12 foot Atrex. This one's stepped up a little bit more. It's got more power in the butt. It's going to be even easier to cast those large spawns. But still, if you want to put a midi spawn on or something a little bit lighter weight, you're not going to lose that accuracy, which is key. If you're not accurate, you're not fishing properly. And then I don't have it here, but there is also a 13 foot powerhouse and hopefully I'll build one of those up soon. I'm very excited. It's even more power again. It's designed for casting extreme distances with large weights. But as I said at the start, it's not all about spotting. I also utilize these for feature finding. I'll cast marker floats. I'll be leading on the bottom. That tip is stiffer, so it's gonna register the indication of what's on the bottom really well with a Nano X spod braid, so I know exactly what I'm fishing on. What substrate? Could it be clay, gravel, silt? You name it, I can pick it out and present my bait with accuracy. Check out the new Atrex spot blanks if you're looking for a premium blank for your marker feature finding and spotting. So I uh, had that fish this morning and I haven't had any more bites. It still looks good for it. I think there's a good chance, but there's still a few fish cruising around. So what I've done is I've dropped a, a few uh, of these oily spob mixes out there and hopefully those flavors dropping through the water, those oils coming up from the bottom as well, it's gonna draw those fish down to the spot. So I'm gonna put about five spods out there and just see if we can tempt another bite. It's not a long cast. It's easy with the 12 foot spod. Just dropping it on, do a few of these, and hopefully before that sun gets too high, we might get a bite.
sitting down to have a cup of tea and the right hand rod has gone again. That's the rod that we replaced earlier and we put a few spots of bait over the spot when it was quieting down because we wondered why we hadn't had another bite and that oily attractive spot mix has obviously worked. Drawn them back on the spot, accurate spot in and we've got another one. What's really interesting is I've put two rods out on that one spot and one with a pink, a washed out pink and one with a white and both bites have come to the pink. So what I should probably do is reel the other rod in, put it on a pink as well and then uh, have both of them on the hook bait of choice that have been picked up both bites. It makes sense to do it and uh, we've got a few more hours yet so you never know we could, could get another one. So it's worth making, ringing the changes to get the bites. Doesn't feel like a very big fish, but they're all welcome. Ah, oh, there we go. We've got another one. Again, another small common, but uh, fantastic to get a third fish. Really feels like we're doing it right now. So I'm going to quickly unhook it, get the rod back out there, and then we'll have a quick look at the prize and see what we got. Well, there we have it. Third fish, and this one's a super clean common. One of the stocky fish. It's going to be a fantastic fish in the future. Check out the colors on that. A lovely another double figure common over that spotted out bait. Got two rods on the spot. We've had two fish off it now. I've swapped over another hook bait to the same colour. Got a few hours left, so who knows? Anything can happen. I'm really made up with two off the bottom, one off the top. So we've shown you exactly what application fishing can achieve. Oh, and I think this fish wants to get back. So we're not gonna not gonna hold her up too much. I'll take you one more time to show you, and then we'll slip her back. There we go, beautiful fish. So it's been fantastic. I'm pretty tired, uh, didn't have much sleep. I was up again at three o'clock in the morning looking for fish, uh, but I'm glad I did because I saw some fish feeding over the baited area. Um, and like I said, after I had that first common, then I dropped a few more spoms out there and it instigated another bite, which is just fantastic. And that's what it's all about with application fishing, paying attention, keep the bait going in regularly if you think you need to top up. And we've got another bite. Actually, we've got like two hours of bite time left and uh, it's looking promising. I was thinking about going and having a look for the floaters again, but uh, it's a bit cooler today. And I think we're gonna be off before they start on the, the uh, evening feed when the sun comes out. So anyway, going to make another cup of tea, sit back and relax. I might even have a little nap and see if the rod goes again. But anyway, if I don't see you again, thanks very much for watching the American Tackle Infos application carp. It's been really fun. If you've got any other future videos you want us to do, please make sure to mention the comments below. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel. And we'll try and bring you as much content as we can to entertain you. Thanks very much. <laughs>